Well, hello guys. I hope you are doing well. Today we are going to talk about CPU intensive versus memory intensive processes. So CPU intensive process, processes are those processes which are going to put more load, much load on CPU. That means they require more CPU power to complete their job. And what are those examples of those processes? Those could be like, you know, encoding or rendering videos a network request uh, it could be large calculations right and what are memory intensive processes memory intensive processes are those processes which requires more ram power more physical memory power so they will be using more memories to save data receive data from memory from physical memory and the example would be like games and browsers you must have observe that your Chrome browser takes much more RAM power than like simple browsers because it uses caches to save data. When you like visit a website, they used to the, the Chrome browser actually saves some static data inside your inside the cache so that once you go back to those website again, the static content won't be retrieved again from the server. Now, so when you got to know about like cpu intensive processes and memory intensive processes how you're going to find out that i mean there must be some tool to understand like which processes are more cpu intensive which processes are more memory intensive so there's a simple tool called htop let's talk about htop we have a terminal here let's start htop so this is a nice view of htop here you can see we have multiple things here to understand let me go through it them one by one so when you talk about here, like when you see the task, so like you can see here, like there's task, like 101 tasks are running. There are like threads, 249 threads are running. And then you can see like 0, 1, 2, what are these? Like they are CPU cores and they are showing like what are the loads on each core. Then comes memory. What percentage of memory is being used? And then swap memory, because we are not using any swap here in my, in my system. But if you are using swap memory, you could have seen the percentage uses of the swap memory as well. And then we have a nice row column table here. You can see processes ID, PID, and the user who owns that process, and then priority and ni niceness. So what are like priority and niceness? So if you know about process scheduling, there is a CPU scheduler which will you know, schedule the pro which will schedule the process in a queue so that it each processes will get the get their part of CPU and use the CPU and hand over CPU to different processes and how it happens. So it happens based on priority. So let's say you have a process and you need more CPU uses. So you can give more priority to that process. It ranges from minus 20 to 90, less the number, more the priority. So using that number, you can set the priorities of processes and accordingly, they will get more part of the CPU. And then there are three columns, like they are called virtual memories, resident memories, and shared memory. So virtual memories are, are those memory users by, by tasks, which stores libraries and mapped files. And resident memories are those memory users which are actually residing in the physical memory. Shared memory are those memory used by particular tasks, which can be shared with other processes as well. There's a small column called S. S is the state of particular process. So processes can be different states. They can be, they could be running, they could be in uninterrupt, uninterruptible sleep mode. That means, or interruptible sleep mode. That means they are waiting for some event to happen, something like a when you're writing a code and you're asking for input from a user, then it is, it's waiting for an event to happen. That is like a user have to put, press some keyboard and then give the input to that process. So that is like an interruptible state. You must have uh, heard about this zombie process. So if there's like Z, they are called defunct or zombie processes. So you can get to know which process in zombie state, which process are in running state, which process are in sleeping mode. So you can have the understanding of each task from this column. And then we have 
two important columns which we're talking talking which we're talking before that is cpu intensive or memory intensive so here you can see the cpu percentage is used by particular task and memory percentage is used by particular task so when you when i click on cpu percentage you can see like there's a thing called xorg and this is something like it's rendering my display so as i said like cpu intensive thing i like rendering display or rendering video so it's more cpu intensive so by sorting on this cpu column you can have an understanding like which processes are taking more cpu or which processes are more cpu intensive when you're running all those tasks on your system when you click on memory percentage column you can see like the norm shell which i'm using right now my shell itself it's taking more memory and then we have a column called time plus it's something like the uptime of particular task like for how long this task has been running and then command is like for each task you, you run a command and that is shown here i hope uh, it explained a lot of things for you like how to understand which processes are cpu intensive which process are memory intensive using this nice tool well thank you for watching this video and i'm pretty sure this video is going to help you in understanding more about cpu intensive processes and memory intensive processes using the tool called htop so like this video subscribe to channel until then see you bye bye